Shalom, I'm Edor and I'm Bel Dutton. I'm going to say that in English. Hello, I'm Dora and Ellen Bel Dutton. Um, make this video in English because I think that the people who need to hear it most are um, Israelis who, anyway, speak some English, Jews in the diaspora, and also Christians whose religion is based on a rabbinic errors in interpretation. Um, I really didn't want to make a video in which I had to speak so plainly and so directly, but I see that it's necessary because uh, things are getting crazier and crazier. Um, to begin with, I'd like to say I used to be very much in favor of Aliyah, Jews coming to live in Israel, um, in order to escape the dangers of, of the diaspora. <clears throat> and that was before I understood that we ourselves generate our experiences. I have since come to understand that a Jew should not come to live in Israel until they come as a supplicant or ready to accept the norms and practices of the early generations as opposed to a rabbinic heresy and are in, in a place where they walk in peace. They tread gently, they tread lightly. There is a site somewhere um, on the net where somebody gives their uh, birthday and they tell the site tells them things that happened in Jewish history on that day. Um, someone recently posted what I'm about to read to you. Uh, it's from that site. And I'd like to share it with you because I think it's very important and it's also very relevant to me immediately because I live in Svat. It says in 1809, a group of 70 disciples of the great Lithuanian sage, the Vilna Gaon, arrived in Israel after traveling via Turkey by horse and wagon. The Vilna Gaon set out for the Holy Land in 1783, but for unknown reasons did not attain his goal. However, he inspired his disciples to make the move and they became the pioneers of modern settlement in Israel. A large contingent of Hasidic Jews arrived in Sfat around the same time. The leader of the 1809 group, Rabbi Yisrael of Shklov, settled in Sfat and six years later moved to Yerushalayim where he founded the modern Ashkenazic community. The early years were fraught with Arab attacks, earthquakes, and a cholera epidemic. Rabbi Yisrael authored Peyat HaShulchan, a digest of the Jewish agricultural laws relating to the land of Israel. He had to rewrite the book after the first manuscript was destroyed in a fire. The location of his grave remained unknown until it was discovered in Tveria 125 years after his death. Maybe yes, maybe no. Today, the descendants of that original group are amongst the most prominent families in Jerusalem. From this we see that the land of Israel did not want these rabbis settling here. The Vilna Gaon himself did not make it, and his students 
we're confronted by both natural disasters, which is very, very directly, directly from Hashem's hand, and also from Arab attacks. He wrote a book which was destroyed in a fire. Clearly the land of Israel did not want these rabbis settling here. The Vilna Gaon may have been a big genius by Polish standards. When I mean Jewish Polish standards. He certainly was not accepted as such by the ancient holy ones in Israel. And we see to this day that the land of Israel does not allow most Jews who come here to live here peacefully. If you don't come here with the right attitude, the land itself rises up against you. If someone is born here and they don't have the right attitude, again, they encounter all kinds of, of problems. Many of them find that they have to make Yerida, they have to leave Israel. The land of Israel simply will not support what they're doing. The rabbi's bread and butter is the misery of the Jews. In order to clarify what I just said, I should first mention the difference, the differences among small, medium, and big business people. A small business person provides for some of the needs and maybe wants of a relatively small group of, of people who buy their wares. A medium-sized business person provides for the needs and wants of a larger group of people and they may diversify more of what they are providing. <coughs> Big business people create those needs and wants. If the needs are natural, they monopolize them. But they also create artificial needs. And they create artificial wants, which often they present as needs. The rabbis that you're going to encounter in lectures are not the big businessmen rabbis. They are the small businessmen rabbis, and maybe, maybe some of the medium businessmen rabbis. Okay? So, Harav Chantarishi, or Rabbi Joe Donowitz, that you're going to encounter is not the person who is determining the policy. They are not creating the needs and the wants. They are doing as they are told. They have higher ups in the rabbinical hierarchy to whom they must answer, and they do as they are told, or they're out of the pale. They're labeled as heretics, they're ignored, they're canned, whatever it is. So most of the rabbis that I'm talking about now should not be blamed for what I'm about to say. However, they should have the strength to be able to recognize that something is wrong and to ask Hashem what's going on. When they see that the world is starting to go belly up, they really need to be praying to Hashem to say, what am I doing wrong? What am I not understanding? Rather than doubling down and doing the same thing that they've been doing with more fervor, more zest, 
producing more books, more lectures, more, uh, more and more of, of, of the same thing that has failed miserably. The big businessmen, rabbis, the ones who have been um, behind the scenes and determining the policy that is the interpretation of Torah intentionally, please listen to me now, because your lives depend on knowing this, intentionally interpret Torah such that you will not know the Torah truth which provides truth and security and prosperity and peace. They are having you do an ersatz of the mitzvot. Putting on tefillin is not the When you have really done the mitzvot, it is an integral part of your body, of your being. It becomes your living flesh. You can't just wrap it on tie it on, take it off, and put it away until the next time. That's not doing a mitzvah. That's an ersatz. Not learning Torah at all and not doing the mitzvot will most certainly result in a chaotic and dangerous life. But doing the mitzvot incorrectly is even more dangerous and produces even more distortions in reality. The secular Jews are they who, um, they buy their reality off a rack like, like, a, like a, a ready-made garment. They have absolutely no ability whatsoever to influence the nature of reality. Those who learn Torah incorrectly are influencing the nature of reality, whether they know it or not. And this is the real reason why the rabbis are so up in arms about having the, the Haredim be drafted, not not be drafted actually. That is the battery that keeps the world such as it is running. Their erroneous learning is what's keeping things such as they are. That is what is maintaining this status quo. The big rabbis are terrified that there will be less power being invested in keeping the world on a very low level. Both our knowledge and the physical world. They know what they're doing very deliberately. Real Torah teaches us how to do the real meets vote. The real mitzvot are never ceremonial, and they are never symbolic. They're always as real as real can be. There's no such thing as Hashem does the actual mitzvot, puts on the real tefillin, and what we're doing is sort of like a symbolic thing of what Hashem is doing. Hashem doesn't do anything. We are the creation. We are the ones that are doing. And so if what we're doing is purely symbolic or ceremonial, we are necessarily living in a degraded world, which is not eternal and is destined to fall apart and is characterized by a lot of chaos. There's nothing real about it. If, people are, if the Jewish people are doing the mitzvot ceremonially, so they're living in a ceremonial world. If they're doing the mitzvot symbolically, they're living in a symbolic world. And that is the reason why 
the most honest of the rabbis admit that they don't feel really real. They're not really real. The mitzvot, such as they have been taught to do them, keep them in a world which they do not know how to control because they're not learning Torah correctly and which is very dangerous. The real mitzvot are not only done with the hands. Torah, in fact, teaches us how to use all of the members of our body and our emotional and mental faculties correctly. So the mitzvot are actually done by all of the parts of our body. They're not done ceremonially, and they're not done by hand. There are rabbis who, it, 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 it would be funny if it wasn't so, so, so awful, and if it, the results weren't so disastrous, there are mitzvot that Hashem teaches, for instance, how to use your intestines correctly, and they're trying to do it with their hands. There are mitzvot that Hashem teaches how to use your eyes correctly, and they're trying to do it with their hands, because they have not understood. Torah teaches us how to use every single member of our body correctly, such that we get to a level on which we are aware that we are the entire creation and we have immense powers. In order to be able to get to that level, Hashem has to be able to trust us with that knowledge. And so a person does not stumble on that knowledge. Neither can one give it over to someone else. Most people, for instance, do not see the color red intentionally. They just see the color red. Those who learn Torah correctly do that intentionally and understand the meaning behind it. Most people taste food and think that that's just the way it is. The food itself has taste. They don't know that they are actually imparting the taste. And they certainly don't do it intentionally. Torah gives us all of this information on the proviso that we use that information wisely and well. We have to get to, to be able to get to a point where we can see that in Torah ourselves. Nobody can give that information over to you. You have to be able to see it yourself. To be able to say it in words would be so complicated that it just wouldn't be absorbed. It probably wouldn't be understood. When we get an insight into Torah, we, all of a sudden we go bang and it, it, it's just so clear. We have to get to that level ourselves. The rabbis have intentionally taught us Torah such that we will never ever get to the level of control over our imagining faculties and our physical abilities and know how to use them correctly, know how to create our own bodies. Learning Talmud is something that is so deleterious, I don't know anyone who has learned Talmud assiduously who has not been damaged by it. And the purpose of learning Talmud is to get your imagination on a, on a wild goose chase. To get your ego hooked into your imagination so that when your imagination starts producing all kinds of tmunot, all kinds of images that's actually forbidden to do, you think you're being very brilliant. This is one of the ways in which the rabbis prevent people from learning Chumash with the help of 
Nach, the writings of, of the, the, the prophets and the judges and the holy writings in Torah, which are the basis, the real basis of the real oral Torah, and teach us how to learn Torah correctly, teach us how to be able to understand the potential, the potential in the letters, and those are also the potential in our bodies. One has to, to be able to read Torah correctly, and it the, the big rabbis are dedicated to keeping Jews um, keeping Jews' attention um, diverted so that they never um, never get to those levels, and that way they, they can be controlled. One of the results of which is not only that most Jews have no concept whatsoever of how to control the laws of nature so that they are the victims of all kinds of vagaries, their incorrect learning also causes Gentiles who are morally deformed to be born. And they, the, the Jews who are learning Torah incorrectly are actually bringing about the stellar con constellations that are going to cause the birth of Gentiles who are anti-Semitic and have all other kinds of problems. It's only when a Jew is learning Torah correctly that, that and their intentions toward the creation are correct that they bring about the, the, the convergence of, of, of the letters in Torah such that they create the convergence of the stellar bodies correctly and when they interact they bring about the birth of pure beings who enjoy having been created and enjoy the creation. The rabbis are keeping most of the Jews from learning that. And this is why they are so desperate not to have them uh, drafted into the army. Because they want as many Jews as possible learning incorrect Torah. They want as much power behind that as possible. Because they never know when the, the balance of power is going to shift and the few that are learning Torah overtake, truly learning Torah, overtake the many, many, many tens of thousands that are learning incorrectly. The truth of the matter is, is that that power balance has already been shifted, but they don't want to admit that. It is essential to turn to Hashem and ask what is the correct way. Becoming secular is not um, a pitwan. How do you say it in English? I keep. I, I excuse me. If my thoughts go faster than my tongue. Um, it's it's not a solution. And um, continuing learning Torah correctly is only going to continue to create more incorrectly. Is only going to cre create more and more chaos. Don't have any illusions that after the war is over, things are going to settle down. That's what you thought, like after COVID is over, then our lives are going to go back to normal. You're always, they always have a, uh, the, 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 the carrot of hope hanging in front of your nose that there's going to be, it's just after the epidemic, uh, then after the war that was after the epidemic, you know. Um, it's one of the ways in which they keep people out of the present, and the present is, is where peace is found, and Mashiach only exists in the present. The value of Mashiach is 358, which is Behove Shale, in my present. And it's also Hahakshama, which is the realization. If Mashiach is not in one's present realization, all hopes of, of a, a future based on incorrect learning is just more grinding water. 
And so the best way to regard the rabbis is, frankly, to ignore them. There's no reason to be angry at them. There's no reason to uh, show any kind of, of, of anger. Um, David HaMelech says, put anger aside. Anger is not helpful, and it, it doesn't solve anything. Our best way of, of dealing with this is to simply ignore what the rabbis are saying until we know enough to be able to instruct them. Not that they really want to hear it, but it becomes our duty to try. But until then, to um, turn our attention away from them, turn our attention to Hashem, to pray. And those of us who are really Jewish have Torah truth written within our DNA. That's where it is. It's in your, in your, in your blood, it's in your bones, it's in your tissues, it's in your sinews, it's in your body. It's in your heart, it's in your eyes, it's in your kishkes. When we turn to Hashem genuinely, the ancient echoes of the true Torah that is in our bodies becomes activated and we begin to uh, see the Hebrew language differently and learn differently and that is the beginning of us taking our true place um, in Eretz Yisrael, the real Eretz Yisrael. Thank you for listening.